Also, what's weird is Nancy Krebs also claimed this was all videotaped as well as other sources, particularly those that, that you know, there's there are theorists who claim that Bill McReynolds was somehow involved and there is a videotape on the dark web. Well, Nancy Krebs was claiming this was all videotaped before any of these theories ever came to light. I mean, let's, let's, and one of these individuals is Thera Kuhn. And I went over some of their posts previously on Conspiracy N-O-P-O-L. They posted John Manny Ramsey and the Pedophile Network responsible for her murder. I mean, this goes into a lot of things, including North Fox Island. I've covered all of this on previous episodes, so check those out. I mean, this one's already getting pretty long, so I'm only going to go over the, uh, the relevant point here in relation to what we're talking about. Others have come forward speaking about abuse relating to John Ramsey's friends, such as Fleet White. Nancy Krebs spoke of abuse, and her story mirrors a similar story perpetuated by Kathy O'Brien, who spoke about her experiences on Beaver Island, of which John Ramsey allegedly frequented and on at least one occasion allegedly took a ferry with his daughter to. According to her, an operation was set up on Beaver Island that centered around the sex the sexual exploitation of young girls. Beaver Island is very close to the Tri-Island area near North Fox Island, with it being Beaver Island South and North Fox Island. John Ramsey was also said to have been on a ferry with Kathy O'Brien's father, but the veracity of her comment on this has never been proven. She claimed many things that line up with this is how this network operated. And I mean, just when you think there can't be any more rabbit holes, I will just add this here too, because, I mean, if it's so common for crazy kooks to come out of the woodwork with these types of stories, because clearly Krebs has established some credibility in terms of who she was and connections with the whites and putting away one pedophile, even if she made that story up, whatever. She's got some kind of credible baseline for association with the Fleet family at minimum. If this is so common, though, of crazy people coming out of the woodwork to accuse random people of this kind of satanic videoed abuse, why haven't we seen more of it? I mean, if it's that, if there's that many crazy people out there, why do we have almost no examples of people like this? And I'm not going to get into John Mark Carr here, but some people allege that he was also involved in some kind of online network of these scumbags. And he possibly even saw a video, a Jean Benet Ramsey video, and this was his version of blowing the whistle in his deranged, demented mind, this is what he came up with, claiming that he was maybe responsible. I mean, look, if we're going down every rabbit hole possible, is it possible some of these scum actually pay money for these types of tapes and they wanted something done to Jean Benet Ramsey? So even though they weren't present at location, they like ordered a request for some kind of video and it was done and she happened to die, even if that wasn't the intention. I mean, we're talking about the, the lowest of the low scum in the world that would obviously be involved in this. But if, if this is true and they are, does that explain why so many wackos have claimed to have killed her? Are they simply part of this online dark web network? Now, some people, of course, do not find Kathy O'Brien credible. So she claims to have been a victim of government mind control programs like Project Monarch, CIA's Project MK Ultra, And yeah, I mean, she's, all, she's authored all these books, so some people believe she's not credible, whereas I don't know if Nancy Krebs is coming out with uh, books and doing all these appearances. And Kathy O'Brien, of course, has made some really, really bold claims so yeah i mean including obviously these sex slaves rings child abuse and also presidents using hologram technology etc etc uh, her claim is actually interesting because she claims that they're using hologram technology to make themselves look like reptilian shapeshifters that's an interesting one, isn't it? It's like the Operation Bluebeam version of David Icke. Because if David Icke's research is all legit and all of the witnesses are telling the truth in terms of they witnessed somebody glitching and turning into a reptilian alien, if that's all man-made technology, they could pass all these lie detector tests or whatever and appear credible because they are credible. That's what they saw. That doesn't mean that interdimensional alien shapeshifters are real. That just means they appear to be using some kind of technology. But... Yeah, I mean, Beaver Island is another, I mean, that's another huge rabbit hole. 
Here's a post by Conscious Language 92. There are also, I believe, many connections or clues between the Ramsey case and the Oakland County child killer case in regard to details of places and dates, the age of children, etc. For example, Jill Robinson abducted Wednesday, December 26, 76, exactly 20 years to the day of Jean Benet. Both girls murdered. Both cases involve specifically bikes, Christmas, snow, both clothed. Jill was age 12, Jean Benet size 12 underwear. Both names start with the letter J. Jean Benet was found with beaver hairs on her hand. Jill was found next to Beaver Road sign. Jean Benet lived at 755 15th Street. Jill was found on I-75 Highway, both with the numbers. John Ramsey's house in Charlevoix is directly opposite Beaver Island. He chose the house numbers in Boulder, Colorado. He chose the J and John Benet, as in John Bennett Ramsey. Studied at Michigan University an hour from all the victims' location when discovered. Owned a plane, owned a business called Access Graphics, a billion-dollar business. Hmm. Thera Kuhn also posted this. I go over a lot in my previous series relating to how the International Access Graphics headquarters were set up in child trafficking hotbeds, including the same vicinity as Francis Sheldon was currently living. What the heck is this? Lady Frolic posted this. I agree with you. It's more than a coincidence. James Dudley J. Ramsey gave Frank Sheldon permission to build a landing strip on North Fox. Their connection isn't Ann Arbor, though. John Ramsey went to Michigan State in Lansing for both undergrad and a master's, not U of M. The link could have been pedophilic, aeronautic, and or Charlevoix. Sheldon owned land in Charlevoix, and I believe the Ramseys summered there in the 60s and 70s. Sheldon was between the ages of father and son. He could have befriended both. It wouldn't require blackmail if they were all like-minded. I mean, that's kind of insane, though, if the Ramseys were linked to North Fox Island specifically through different family members and that area. And then also Beaver Island there, directly across from the Charlevoix house. Wow. Okay, Thera Kuhn posted this. This is really one for the coincidence theorists who think that uh, snuff films aren't real. And, you know, or there's no actual attempt to create them. Thera Kuhn posted this. Take, for example, the website Mariana's Web. The website featured 28,000 members who actively shared materials. 28,000. They arrested three people not far from where I am in Michigan for a plot to kidnap, rape, and kill a child from a carnival in the area, all on videotape so they could sell it on the dark web. They were one of the few groups who were caught. In this group, there were two men and a woman, proving it's not just a boys' club either. I mean, this is insane. And for those that think this is a fake post, again, like a lot of these so-called conspiracy theorists posting on Reddit, when you vet them, it turns out to be true. WZZM13.com on the uh, ABC News here. Four, it was actually four people arrested in plot to kidnap, rape, and murder a child. Matthew Toole and Talia Furman among them. I mean, this is insane. This was September 21st, 2018. So, I mean, this is just absolutely insane. And John Ramsey's father was Dudley Ramsey, who was implicated in North Fox Island. Let's go over another interesting post circling back to the uh, Judge Long's alleged comments here. This comment is by Benny Baku. It is unfortunate corruption and greed's tentacles suck the life out of the good of the people. It's not just Boulder, but everywhere where there is money and power to be had. They are intertwined in our political system, our government, and in every global nation on this earth. In order to save the people and the good of the people, you need to cut the head off the snake. No one is willing to do it because they'll probably end up dead or they are knee-deep in the evil corruption that only money can buy. They are content with selling their souls to the devil. That's the one thing to bring this case is an example of how sick the rich are, John Ramsey being one of the elite in Boulder. He wasn't, and the circle of friends they had weren't either. We don't know much about the fleet's wealth or lack of, but Priscilla has the career while fleet stayed home. With that in mind, the fleets may have been comfortable financially with Priscilla working, but they didn't have money to throw around. Their friends in Boulder really didn't run with the rich and famous of Boulder, Colorado. Really, the Ramseys didn't always have money. They built the company as a family. 
This, well, I don't know how much of that is true based on John Ramsey's father, but this is a bit off the subject. But while I'm here, I think people should be reminded of the importance as far as Patsy is concerned. People like to point out how Patsy was really, really good at spending John's money. It wasn't his money. It was their money. She worked equally hard at building the company to the level that it was attracting a huge secretive company like Lockheed Martin. When they were first in Boulder, she was working for the company, but then she got cancer. Cancer changed her perspective on what was truly important, their children. The company was off and running. It was time for Patsy to invest her time to the most important asset they had, the kids. She did, and she was happy, and she could have had that opportunity. Not everyone can without financial sacrifice. Back to my issue with the pedophile rings and why I find it a dangerous diversion to this case. There was and is no evidence John Ramsey was involved in such a depraved network. This was a homicide. Why the Ramseys and Jean Benet were chosen, we don't know. We don't know because we don't have the missing piece, the intruder and or intruders. Until then, to spend energies on far-fetched theories that take people down rabbit holes serves no purpose except take you down rabbit holes of no return. Well, unless some of the rabbit holes are true. As far as whether this judge did or didn't state this just messes with the mind and focus of who did this, then I wonder how in the world did pedophile rings enter into this narrative? Children are murdered by psycho pedos all too often, but how in the world does a ring of wealthy and powerful pedophiles come into play in this homicide, whereas in the murders of children in this country, such theories don't come into play? Well, and how many? In some of them they would, some of them they wouldn't, right? What is it in the Jaminet case that fosters these theories? Was it because the Ramses are wealthy? Was it because of the pageants? Was it because of the national coverage? Or, like the BDI theory fills in the weaknesses of the RDI theory, the PRDI, the pedophile ring theory, fills in the weaknesses in the IDI theory. The PRDI theory explains why the intruder wasn't and will not be found. They are protected by the cops and the Boulder elite, who's protected by those up the political ladder. I have ranted enough. This will be the last I say about that. I mean, a lot of interesting points there. I mean, really, if they, if they want this thing solved, they should just brain fingerprint scan for all remaining people. But this, I mean, going down these darkest of dark rabbit holes, I mean, it's just, it's it's really tough because it seems like nothing makes sense no matter where you look. And is it all by design? Because this vast conspiracy, as crazy as it might seem, does it does it explain everything? Now, obviously, without definitive hard evidence, there you know you can't claim that it's true, and I'm not claiming it's true. I'm not claiming anything is true or untrue. This is, of course, mind shock where we attempt not to fall for any logical fallacies of any kind. But if it's true and it explains all the variables, what are we supposed to do? Ignore it? I mean, obviously, evidence is needed. Evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. If we're going to criminal court now. This uh, this rumor of this being there being some kind of a snuff film on the dark web, if there's truth to it, you would think someone would have found it by now. Obviously, that's not something I mess with. I have zero interest in the dark web. That just sounds way too insane for me, not just regarding any kind of possible murders caught on video, but just the very nature of it in general. Uh, it just seems weird. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It just seems way too weird. There's too much of a criminal element across the board. But people who have been on the dark web, they can chime in here on uh, how all that stuff works. I actually did an episode on the dark web with JR. You can check that out on Mindshock. It's an older episode. Uh, we didn't get into the JonBenet Ramsey case, of course, or, or even other cases, just the general idea of criminals operating in the shadows, so to speak. But, yeah, I mean, this this really is a one-of-a-kind case. You just don't see this many rabbit holes in other cases. So is it really possible that it's all mere coincidence that there's just even this many rabbit holes? I don't know. What do all the Mind Shock listeners think about this? Chime in in the comments section. Obviously, we have way more suspects to go over. Uh, this was a long one, but there's, again, there's seemingly an endless amount of rabbit holes and suspects, each with an assortment of variables that can and cannot be dismissed. So definitely, uh, very, very mind shocking across the board. So I hope everybody found another edition of Mind Shock True Crime interesting and informative. If you want to help support the podcast, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. You can also become a YouTube member right here on YouTube for access to exclusive streams and chats. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, like and share Twitter, Facebook, Patreon. This is Bruce McGuire. Signing off. Catch you guys next time.